This video and every video on this channel is made possible by your support on patreon.com slash 616 entertainment. I couldn't do this without you and your contributions keep this channel alive. You can also grab an official shirt over on prowrestlingtees.com slash 616 entertainment. What's up Dan Dans? Welcome to the brand new weekly series here on youtube.com slash 616 entertainment, the Fight Night Championship Tournament. On this show we're going to be using one of my all time favorite games, Fight Night Round 4, to determine, once and for all, who is the greatest heavyweight boxer of all time. Over the next seven weeks, eight of the greatest heavyweights to ever lace them up are going to step into the ring, competing in a single elimination tournament. When it's all said and done, we will have our first ever official 616 Entertainment Fight Night Heavyweight Champion. Holy jeez, Dan Dans, we are here and it is time. It's the Staples Center in Los Angeles and it's time for the main event of this evening. Mike Tyson, Iron Mike Tyson, steps into the ring for the first time here in the 616 Fight Night Championship Tournament and he will be standing across the ring from another legend, another Hall of Famer, the man who says, y'all must have forgot. This is Roy Jones. Jr. Now I got a little bit of pushback for putting Roy Jones Jr. on this bracket. Got a little bit of pushback for putting Roy Jones Jr. in this tournament. I had people in the comments saying Roy is not a heavyweight. Tell that to John Ruiz, the man that Roy Jones Jr. beat for the WBA Heavyweight Championship of the World. Tell that to John Ruiz, okay? <laughs> Don't tell it to me. And again, uh, do I want to put James Tony on this bracket? A man that Roy Jones Jr. beat early in their career. Who would wind up being a heavyweight for a longer period of his career than Roy was. Do I want to put Roy, one of the most exciting boxers of all time, one of the greatest boxers of all time, on the bracket. I want to put Roy Jones Jr. on the goddamn bracket, okay? Here we go, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr. This is a fight for the ages, and I said... Coming into this tournament that all of these fights... Oh! First punch of the fight! First punch and Roy Jones is hurt! Seconds into this fight and in classic Mike Tyson fashion, his opponent is in trouble! I said coming into this tournament that these are all dream fights. These are all fights no one has ever seen before. And that is true. Now you might say, oh, Mike Tyson fought Roy Jones Jr. in 2020. That was an exhibition that did not count. Look at both of their professional records. It doesn't count on paper. That was, I mean, it was sanctioned, but it didn't count. It was an exhibition. And they're fucking in their mid fifties. This is both guys in their prime coming in here to throw some fucking leather. One of these guys is going to prove that they belong in the conversation for the greatest heavyweight of all time status. And there is a hard left hand to the body and a hard right hand to the head from Roy Jones. You know, sometimes you call him Captain Hook. That's because from any angle, Roy Jones can crack you with a power shot. Left hook, right hook, any bitch could get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Roy Jones got hurt with the first punch of the fight, but that may not be indicative of things to come. Because if you know anything about anything, you know that Roy Jones Jr. is fast, he's powerful, and he's one of the consensus greatest boxers of all time. We're not even talking heavyweights. I'm talking pound for pound right now. You know, I did a little bit of research, and if you've ever been to BoxRack.com, that is a great database of professional boxers, career records, their title wins, their title defenses. BoxRec ranks Roy Jones at number 29 in the greatest pound-for-pound -pound boxers ever. Oh, there's a hard right hand from Mike Tyson landing upstairs on Roy Jones Jr. If you don't know what the terminology of pound for pound means, that means we're not talking about weight classes. Oh, Roy's was one of the best uh, light heavyweights of all time. No, throw that out. They're saying that Roy Jones is one of the greatest boxers ever. 
Williams, regardless of weight class. You know, that includes a guy like Canelo Alvarez. That includes a guy like Floyd Mayweather Jr., who retired at 50 and 0. You know, we're not talking about in their respective weight classes. We're talking about strip away the size on a skill basis. Box Rec considers Roy one of the greatest to ever do it. And I don't think they're wrong. And if you are not a big boxing fan and you just know Mike Tyson, because that's a famous name. You know, he was on Mike Tyson's punch out. So you thought that this was going to be a walk in the park for Iron Mike. You're out of your mind. This is going to be an excellent fight. And I think that this first round has proven that without a shadow of a doubt. The first round comes to an end with a fucking truck of a right hand by Iron Mike. Now, Dan Dance, I didn't say it to kick things off, and I should have, but it's not too late. We're only one round in. Get in the comments and make your prediction. Who is moving on to the semifinals? Will it be that man, Iron Mike Tyson, who's already sporting a cut under the left eye? Or will it be Roy Jones Jr.? Make your pick. It is always fun to me to wait for these episodes to premiere and then go through the comments and see who picked it perfectly or who may have been off by a mile. That's one of the best parts about all the- Oh no! You want to talk about best parts? This is obviously the best part of the night for Mike Tyson. A right hook sends Roy Jones Jr. to the floor. And those, you know what? Maybe you can call them late, but the referee didn't get there in time. That's not Iron Mike's fault. You fight until the referee pulls you off. Roy Jones Jr. is going to get back to his feet, but now he's got his work cut out for him. Last week, we saw an incredible knockout by Tommy Morrison. Oh, another right hand by Mike Tyson. We saw an incredible knockout by Tommy Morrison over smoking Joe Frazier. Mike Tyson is trying to punch not only Roy Jones Jr. in the head, he's trying to punch his ticket to the semifinals to stand across the ring from Tommy Morrison. But if Roy Jones Jr. has any say in the matter, he... Oh, a right uppercut, and Roy's hurt again! Roy is hurt again! He clinches up, and that might be the saving grace here tonight. Now, Dan Dan's... <laughs> it doesn't necessarily look like it right now. With the offense from... Oh, God! With the offense from Mike Tyson. But Roy Jones is one of the best to ever do it. If you are an MMA fan, and you're a fan of Anderson the Spider Silva, and you have flashbacks to Anderson entering the Matrix and styling on guys like Forrest Griffin and Rich Franklin before he shut their... Oh, God damn it! Oh, God damn it! Roy Jones is in trouble! Roy Jones is in big trouble! But he is surviving these deep waters. He's able to keep his head above water. If you can picture in your head those unbelievable finishes from Anderson Silva, listen, Roy Jones Jr. is Anderson Silva's idol. Roy Jones Jr. was the blueprint for Anderson Silva's antics in that ring, or in that cage in Anderson's case. It was always Anderson's dream to box Roy Jones Jr. It never came to fruition, but... Here we are today watching Roy Jones Jr. step in there with Mike Tyson. And oh, what a beautiful combination from Roy. And that's one of the things that we have to talk about here. If there was... Oh, God damn it. Oh, God damn it. Roy Jones is down again inside of two rounds. And see, that's the problem right there. Mike Tyson didn't catch Roy on the end of that punch. He caught him with all of the power. You know, he didn't even get his arm fully extended. Every single ounce of pressure touched Roy Jones Jr.'s jaw. And that was catastrophic. But if there ever was a weakness to Roy, his head movement was incredible. His footwork was unparalleled. But when Roy got a little bit older and his, as he moved up in weight classes and guys were able to find his chin... Roy Jones didn't necessarily take a punch the way that Muhammad Ali did. Roy Jones didn't take a punch that some of these other guys did. You were never able to find Roy Jones Jr., but if you could, you might have been able to stop him, you know? And Mike Tyson, much to the chagrin of Captain Hook here through two rounds, Tyson's been able to find Roy's chin. And if Roy Jones Jr. 
wants to make a competitive fight out of this, he's going to have to get on his bike, he's going to have to stick and move, and he's got he's to gotta not let Mike find that goddamn chin. And that has been trouble so far for Roy Jones Jr. And we, it, like, we're looking at the power from Mike Tyson here. And nobody would ever accuse Mike Tyson of not having power in those hands. You know what I mean? Mike Tyson, when it was all said and done, scored 44 knockout victories. His final record was 50 and 6, and 44 of those 50 wins were by knockout. But, and again, it might not look like it right, right now, but Roy Jones Jr. walking away with a record of 66 and 9. Roy Jones Jr. notched 47 knockout victories. That's more than Mike Tyson. Now, granted, Roy Jones Jr. had more wins than Mike Tyson did. So, obviously, he might have more knockouts. But, again, oh, man, this is just... As a gigantic fan of Roy Jones Jr., I was hoping this fight was going to look, look a little more competitive and I don't want to count him out, but... Oh, look at that! Sticking and moving! That's what we need from Roy Jones! I don't want to count him out just yet, but... With the way things are unfolding right now, it could just be a matter of time. So I want to put Roy over while I have the chance here. Olympic silver medalist in the 1988 Games, and many people call Roy Jones' loss in those 1988 Olympic Games a fucking robbery, to the point that it was investigated by the council. That's how dog shit that decision was. And look, Roy Jones Jr. is the only boxer ever to start his career at light middleweight, move up weight classes, and eventually capture the heavyweight championship of the world. Mike Tyson was the young... Oh! Mike Tyson's hurt! Roy Jones Jr. with the left hook and Tyson is hurt! Can Roy Jones put him down? Can Jones put him down here in the third round? Oh god! Tyson answers back! Tyson found his feet and he's answering back in a big way! God damn, this is exciting. I love this show. I love this show so much. <laughs> Mike Tyson was the youngest heavyweight champion of all time. Listen, Mike Tyson knocked out Trevor Burbick in the second... Tyson's hurt again! Tyson is hurt again and Roy Jones is fighting the fight that I was talking about earlier. This is how Roy Jones needs to fight if he wants to move on in this tournament. Oh, I'm getting excited. Got me sounding like Michael and off the wall over here. You know it's good shit when it starts sounding like Michael Jackson. You understand? <laughs> Mike Tyson crowned the youngest heavyweight champion of all time when he knocked out Trevor Burbick at just 20 years old. Mike Tyson was also the first heavyweight ever to unify all three of the major championships. Do you understand? IBF, WBA, WBC, Tyson was the first heavyweight to ever do it. You want to talk about undisputed. It doesn't get any more undisputed than Mike Tyson. Goodness gracious. And hey, let's talk video games for a second. Mike Tyson had his own video game. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out on the NES. Who was on the cover of Fight Night 2004? Roy Jones motherfucking Jr. Do you understand? Oh, look at shots to the body. A combination of the body from Mike Tyson. This is now a competitive fight. I was worried that this was just going to be a complete drowning of Roy Jones Jr. Based on how it looked early. But that third round, you got to give to Roy Jones Jr. Exciting stuff here. Very exciting stuff. And look. Oh, Tyson's got cuts under both eyes at this point. You got to imagine the referee is looking very closely at the blood pouring out of the face of Mike Tyson. We talked about Roy Jones Jr. being ranked near the top all time, pound for pound, on many... Oh, left hook to the body from Roy Jones Jr. Mike Tyson is a fighter that is famous. He is world-renowned, you know? There's probably people in a galaxy far, far away that somehow have picked up radio waves and somehow, some way, they know the name Mike Tyson. You understand? That's, that's the kind of fame we're talking about. Maybe the most recognizable boxer of all time behind only Muhammad Ali. I don't think that's much of a stretch, you know? But Mike Tyson is a guy who you don't see, and the, the big boxing diehard fans in the comments will agree with this, Mike Tyson's not a guy that you see on the all-time pound-for-pound list, you know? When it comes to most outlets, uh, 
like all-time lists, a lot of them don't even rank Mike Tyson in the top 10 heavyweights of all time. And a lot of that is just based on longevity, you know? And that's not to say that Tyson doesn't belong on your Mount Rushmore, you know? Because if, if we're, I know we got wrestling fans who are watching this show. And if you want, you want to talk about the pro wrestling Mount Rushmore, you might put guys like The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin on your Mount Rushmore. Look, Austin's, Austin's top run was from 98 to 2001. Okay? That's, that's four years if you're counting the year it started. 98, 99, 2000, 2001. Four years. Tyson's run on top was about five years. You know, Roy Jones had that longevity. Roy Jones had 12 unified title defenses. We're not just talking about he had, oh, he had one of the belts and he defended it. We're talking about a unified, undisputed champion with 12 defenses. Mike Tyson was a, a heavyweight champion with nine defenses to his name, but not all of those were unified titles. And I realize casual boxing fans or people who just like this show or like this channel might not necessarily understand those terms and let me try and oh god these guys are throwing I, i'm trying i'm doing color commentary here and i'm telling the story instead of just doing straight play by play but let me try and set this scene for you okay um i'm gonna use wrestling terms to try to make it uh simple and understandable for um for wrestling fans so here's one way to put it Imagine, uh, I'm saying Roy Jones Jr. was the U.S. Intercontinental WWE and Universal Champion and defended it 12 goddamn times, okay? No, one has, no one's ever done that. No one's ever had all four of those belts. And the thing is with boxing, under different promotions and different banners, you know, with the WBC, the WBA, the IBF, the other ones that... Oh, what a right hook from Roy Jones Jr.! All these different promotions and championships and organizations that exist, instead of the Intercontinental and the U.S. and all these things, you could say it's almost like Roy Jones Jr. was the WWE, the AEW, the New Japan. He had all those belts, you know? We're talking crazy shit. And what I want to see right now, I want to see Mike Tyson's face. Because after the third round, we, he had blood streaming from underneath both eyes, which is not something that we're, that we're seeing on Roy Jones Jr. And here, that blood is still flowing. Mike Tyson started off in a big way, started off hot, dropped Roy Jones Jr. twice, but Roy has found his footing. And Roy, he is landing at will now on Iron Mike, and for the first time, Iron Mike is stepping back. Mike Tyson is trying to find his feet, he's trying to find his bearings, and he's going, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is not what I signed up for. I signed up for a 10-second fight where I was going to come out and smash this fool and I was going to move on in this tournament. Roy Jones Jr., he weathered the early storm. He's been on the canvas twice, and you know what? It could happen in the blink of an eye. If Roy Jones... Oh, there it is, right there! If Roy Jones Jr. zigs when he should have zagged and Tyson connects, he could be on the floor again, maybe for the final time. Oh, god damn! That's exactly what I'm talking about. But in the meantime, look at this. Roy is not just throwing power punch, power punch, power punch. We're seeing him move. We're seeing him jab. We're seeing him use that jab as a range finder to find out where Mike is, where Mike is going to be before he commits to these big punches. And I'm not going to discount the defense of Mike Tyson either. Because he's blocking a lot of these shots here in the fifth round. Oh, both guys landing there. Both guys. Oh, man. A combination from Roy. Answered with a right hand by Mike Tyson. This is fucking exciting. Last week, Joe Frazier and Tommy Morrison blew the roof off the joint. This week, Mike Tyson and Roy. Oh, he's hurt. Roy Jones Jr. is hurt again. And he's clinching up. Damn near got Mike Tyson in a guillotine choke here, holding on for dear life, trying to find his feet. Last week it was Morrison and Frazier. This week it's Tyson and Jones Jr. These guys are looking to... Look, listen, only one of these guys is going to win, but both of them want to go down in the history books as being the most exciting fight you ever saw. And as the people who are watching this fight, I think we all appreciate it.
I appreciate all of you who are here right now watching the Fight Night Championship Tournament. God damn. <laughs> this is a fun show. This is a very fun show. Oh, God, Roy, you can't take those, man. You can't be taking those. You know what makes this, much like Monday Night Blitz, what makes the Fight Night Championship Tournament so fun is there are stakes. There's something on the line each and every week we turn this show on, you know? I'm not, I'm not saying that 616 Nitro isn't a good time. And there, there are stakes there, too. When we're playing through a season mode, we got titles on the line and shit like that. But here, here in the Fight Night Championship... Oh, Mike Tyson's hurt! Left hook! Roy Jones! Roy Jones looking for a finish! Roy Jones, body shots! Beautiful strategy there from Jones. What do you do when you get him hurt up top? You go down low. When you crack a guy on the chin and his brain is all discombobulated and his fucking, he's all concussed and his brain is bouncing around the inside of his skull, what's he going to do? He's going to cover up upstairs. He's got hit in the head. He wants to make sure he doesn't get hit in the head again. And what happens when you cover your head? Your body is wide open. Roy Jones Jr. is a pro. Roy Jones Jr. is a multiple-time world champion in four different weight classes. You think he didn't see that coming? You think he didn't have a purpose to what he just did right there? Y'all must have forgot! Roy Jones Jr. is here to stay! Holy fuck. This is so much fun. <laughs> the stakes. Oh, god damn. The stakes is what I was getting at. It's that there is something on the line. One of these guys is going to get knocked out of the running and maybe knocked out cold. And one of these guys is going to move on. They're going to have an opportunity to move on in this tournament to eventually crown themselves as 616 Fight Night Heavyweight Champion. There can only be one. There can only be one champion. You understand? Could it be Mike Tyson? Possibly. Could it be Roy Jones Jr.? Possibly. That's why we're here today. One of these guys is going to move on and they will face Tommy Morrison in the semifinals. I think coming into this fight, you have to imagine the favorite was Iron Mike Tyson. I would imagine when I look at these comments after this episode has premiered, I would imagine that I'm going to see a lot of people picking Mike Tyson. So if Roy Jones wins, if he pulls off the upset, that will be another upset. Because I would imagine last week, most people picked Joe Frazier to knock out Tommy Morrison. The week before that, I would imagine most people picked Muhammad Ali to beat Evander Holyfield. Oh my goodness, beautiful defense there from Roy Jones Jr. Blocking that left uppercut to the body. And there's a beautiful defense from Mike Tyson answering it back. He parried that jab upstairs, landed one of his own. And there's a possibility that this fight has gone longer than most people thought it would. Because Roy Jones Jr. was a sniper, you know? Mike Tyson was a bulldozer. He was a tank. He would get in front of you and bing bang and you were gone, you know? But Roy Jones Jr. Oh God, there's a left uppercut. Jones is in trouble. Jones is in trouble. And rather than going for a clinch, Roy Jones is hanging in the pocket, answering back. Maybe he's trying to display his poker face. Roy Jones right now might be trying to prove to Mike Tyson that he's not as hurt as Mike thinks he is, but we know he's hurt. We know that Roy was in a bad way right there. Oh my goodness, excellent defense from Mike Tyson, blocking that right hook up top. The pressure here from Tyson is pretty incredible. He's pushing the pace. He's constantly putting Roy against the ropes. And when he gets him on the ropes, it's, he's not hes not unloading, you know? Tyson isn't throwing 55 fucking power punches every chance he gets. He's fighting a measured fight because I think at this point, here in, what, the sixth round, I think Tyson realizes that he has to. He has to fight a measured... He has to take a measured approach in this fight against Roy. Because if he doesn't, he's going to gas out you don't want that. When there's 12 rounds on the line, you don't want that. This is an excellent performance from both guys. Mike came out, puts Roy Jones Jr. on the canvas early, but after that, Roy is in this fight. Jones Jr. is not backing off. He's still here. I think he took... 
He may have taken a couple of those middle rounds. I can't say for sure. And Tyson's face is fucked up. Tyson's face is Swiss cheese. You understand? There are holes in it. And we're heading into the seventh round here. And Tyson hasn't been down on the mat the way that Roy Jones Jr. has. But that damage is going to add up. And the, if the referee feels like he has to step in and call this one off because Tyson's face has fallen off, if the skin is going to fall off the skull of Mike Tyson, the referee is going to have to make a difference. And he's going to have to protect the fighter from himself. Right now, I think it's on Mike Tyson to not let the referee wind up in that position. Every once in a while, I like to lay out I just like to let the action unfold without distracting you guys, without providing color or play-by-play -play over it. And I think what I saw there in that couple seconds that I was able to just sit back and enjoy this fight was Roy Jones is landing. Oh, God, Tyson's hurt! Right hook and Tyson is hurt! Once again, Iron Mike is on rubbery legs! Roy Jones is landing more. It seems a little silly now to say that Tyson is landing harder after we just saw him hurt once again right there. But Roy is landing more punches. Tyson might be landing the harder, more concrete shots, and that's why Roy Jones Jr. has been down on the mat twice. And Tyson has. But look at that! That was four unanswered shots right there from Roy Jones Jr. And th that's why Tyson's face looks the way it does. It's because... Roy is not kneeling down and throwing these punches from fucking Florida all the way up to New York. You know what I mean? He's not winding all the way up with these big looping punches. Some of them are looping. Some of them are power shots. But in between those power shots, he's going tap, 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 tap. And a lot of those are getting through. God. Oh, goodness gracious. A slip and a stick from Roy Jones and he does it again. We are, we could see, we could see a referee stoppage here. We could, oh, God damn. Mike Tyson says, don't you talk that mess. Don't you be talking about referee stoppages. Referee who? Who needs a referee when I'm going to put this guy down and out? The only thing you're going to need a referee for is to count to 10. But the motherfucker could count to 100 if you give him time. Don't talk about stoppage, referee stoppage. You out of your mind, soccer? <laughs> Oh, I love this fight. I love this. I love this fight. I love this show. I love all of you guys for being here. Whether you're watching on YouTube.com slash 616 Entertainment. Whether you're supporting over on Patreon.com slash 616 Entertainment. I appreciate each and every single fucking one of you. You understand? That was a gorgeous shot right there. It was a short right uppercut from Mike Tyson. And Roy Jones Jr., he bent down into it. How that didn't drop him, I don't know. But also, I keep talking about the damage on Mike Tyson. Roy Jones Jr. left eye is almost swollen shut. I know you saw it right there. And if you didn't, click that back button on your keyboard. Not backspace. Click the back arrow, the left arrow on your keyboard. And look at Roy Jones Jr.'s left eye. Because it's fucked up. You're not going to hear commentary like that on Showtime or HBO or ESPN. They got to keep it a little more professional. You know, this is YouTube. I can go blue. I can say whatever the fuck I want. Roy Jones Jr.'s left eye is fucked up. Oh, man. Oh, man. Both guys were throwing power there, and they both made the other miss. Either one of those shots could have ended their opponent's night. I, can't, I really cannot believe the way that this fight has unfolded. I really can't. Early on, I, 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 was, I didn't want to jinx it. But early on, I was like, I don't want to say that this is a matter of time for Mike Tyson to knock out Roy Jones Jr., but it certainly looks like it could be. I said that Roy needed to get on his bike, he needed to move around, make Mike Tyson miss, and hit him in between. He's Look at that! He's doing it! Roy the, the AI in this game is so fucking good. This AI Roy Jones Jr. is fighting like Roy Jones Jr. And if you disagree with that, it's because you don't know how Roy Jones Jr. fights. Look at that. Mike Tyson makes him miss, makes him pay. A left hook to the body. 
I would like to see Tyson use a little more of his head movement. Because that might be the one department where... There you go. See that t -t -t, that that little back and forth there from Tyson. That, oh, that Now we're seeing it. Now we're seeing Tyson moving around. Bobbing and weaving. Getting inside. He, he ducks down and he bobs to get inside. And then whack. He makes you pay. That's what I want to see out of Mike Tyson here. Boom. A, a sticking jab. A, a, oh, answered by a venomous right hand from Roy Jones Jr. This is so fucking good. Each one of these fights on this bracket is better than the one that came before it. And if you don't think so, you're out of your fucking ass. <laughs> Feel free right now to get in the comments and make an updated prediction. Did you pick Tyson early and you want to switch over to Roy Jones Jr.? Leave another comment. Go ahead. That also really helps the algorithm. I'll be transparent. <laughs> And click that like button, too, while you're at it. Do me a favor. Oh, beautiful stuff from both guys! Tyson's hurt! Tyson is hurt! This is bad business for Mike Tyson! Roy Jones Jr. landing at will! Mike Tyson goes down! Holy fucking shit. A gorgeous left hook. And it just grazed him. It just grazed him on the tip of his fucking eye socket. But Tyson's legs were already cooked. Spaghetti noodles, al dente. Mike Tyson goes down. Shout out to Teddy Atlas, who was a former trainer of Mike Tyson, by the way. Roy Jones Jr. is coming back in a big way as this fight progresses, and this is out of control. I can't even believe how good this fight is. Tyson has to land a big shot, and I think he will in about five seconds. Let's count it down. Five, four, three. There's one. Two, one. Hey, I'll take the one. I'll take that counter left uppercut to the body. Oh, there's another one. Man, if I started that. <gasps> A goddamn leveling right hook just at the bell for Roy Jones Jr. Holy shit. I'm so, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy that all of these fights have been so good. And look, I knew I was gambling starting a show like this because in a fight as the blood continues to pour out of both eyes of Mike Tyson, with a show like this, you never know. A fight could end in the first round, and I'm going to give you a 12-minute fucking episode, if that. The entrances better be long if we're talking 12 minutes. But these guys are both bringing everything they got. They're throwing power punches. Roy is landing combinations here, and that's not good for Mike Tyson. Both of these guys have put each other down. God damn. Oh, it's so exciting. It's so exciting. And I, I just hope... Oh my God! A stinging left uppercut from Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. backed off in a big way after that one. Man, we talked about a poker face earlier. Roy Jones Jr. should be on that ESPN poker celebrity special right now with, with what he's doing. Because you know that shot shook him to his core. That was an earthquake that rattled the spine. <gasps> Are you kidding me? Roy Jones Jr. with a right hook for the ages. Tyson's fucked. I think it's over. I'm calling it right now. I think it's over. I think Roy Jones Jr. just knocked out Mike Tyson. The referee's making the count. Can Tyson reach his feet? Unbelievable. He's continuing on. The damage is accumulating. Roy Jones Jr. is pouring on the offense. Tyson is not backing down. Tyson is saying, if you want me out of here, you got to take me out of here, sucker. Oh, goddamn, a right hand to the body. Mike Tyson with the right hand to the body. Tommy Morrison and Joe Frazier last week, I, in my opinion, gave us the best fight we've ever seen. And I think Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. watched that fight. And they said, you know what? I don't think so. We're going to give you the best fight you've ever seen. And Tyson here, look at Mike Tyson. He's covering up. Tyson's covering up and then he's answering back. That one got through. <laughs> oh, goddamn, a right hand from Mike Tyson. Unbelievable. Mike Tyson, <gasps> he's hurt. He's hurt in a big way. Tyson is clinching, and this fight might be slipping away here in the late rounds. Roy Jones Jr. could be seconds away 
from knocking out Mike Tyson. I don't have a clock. I don't know how much time is left in this round, but Tyson has got to be begging for that bell to ring. He's hurt again. Roy Jones has hurt Mike Tyson again, and there's a left uppercut, and Tyson goes down. That's the third time Mike Tyson has gone down, and it doesn't get any more solid than that left uppercut on the chin. I think it's over. The referee is making the count. Mike Tyson is going to have to borrow the will of everybody in the fucking world. And he does. Somehow he does. Listen, I'm not a Dragon Ball Z guy. My girlfriend, the beautiful Tara Darcy, is a gigantic Dragon Ball Z fan. And the referee stops the fight! The referee has called this thing off. Mike Tyson's eyes are swollen shut. They're pouring blood. He's been put down three times. And the referee said, I've seen enough. Holy shit. What I was going to say, let's finish that story. Mike Tyson had to borrow the energy of every living person to get back to his feet there. And he did. And the referee said, you know what? You're going to die out here if I let you. I can't let that happen. Look at the scorecards, Roy Jones Jr. pulled away late in this fight. Roy Jones Jr., after going down hard, was ahead on all three judges' scorecards, had shut out Mike Tyson across all three scorecards in the last three rounds. Unfucking believable performance. Let's take a look at the updated bracket. The semifinals are now set. We are gonna see the completion of the trilogy. Lennox Lewis will battle Evander Holyfield for the third time. And on the other side of the bracket, Tommy Morrison will now face Roy Jones Jr. I cannot believe that Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali were both eliminated in the first round. Unbelievable stuff. Dan Dan's The Fight Night Championship Tournament might be the most exciting show that we've ever done here on 616 Entertainment. And if you love this show, hey, maybe consider heading over to patreon.com slash 616 Entertainment. Tell me how much you love it there. You know what I'm saying? Dan Dance, I love you. And I'll see you next week for what must be another fucking banger.